that if I am appointed prom chairman, I will arrange the most brilliant affair in this school's history. Here, here. You mean how, how? <laughs> the class will dance to the coolest band in town, feast on a dazzling array of delicious refreshments, and enjoy all this in a setting decorated to look like a veritable fairyland. I thank you. Mr. President. Swellen. Let's face it. No matter what Patty promises, the class knows that for their three dollars a couple, they'll get their choice of either the Flatbush Five or stale chopped egg sandwiches in the school gym. Now, oh, wait a minute. Nevertheless, if I'm appointed chairman, I promise that everyone will positively be at the prom. Why should they? Because my father is president of a bank, and he knows a lot of celebrities. I guarantee that one of them will appear as our guest. Patty, what have you got to say to that? Well, uh... I, I didn't hear you, Patty. She said, well, uh... <laughs> uh, I promise that if I'm appointed prom chairman, my father, Martin Lane, managing editor of the New York Chronicle, will guarantee that the guest celebrity will be the biggest single name in show business. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Uh, I'm not at liberty to divulge that name right now. Because she's bluffing. <laughs> All right. You both have until tomorrow at three when I name the prom chairman. See you then. Thanks, Walter. Coming? See you later. Know something, darling? I don't think you have anybody. You won't know until tomorrow afternoon, will you? <laughs> Boy, you sure told her off. I sure did. By the way, who'd you get for the prom? How am I supposed to know? <laughs> <laughs> Who's lit most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights A girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins My dirty cool cousins all the way One pair of matching bookends Different as night and day Where Kathy adores a minuet The ballet russe and Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. And so all need from you is one teeny weeny little celebrity. Can't you see that, Papa? Patty, I'm no Walter Winchell. I don't come in contact with what you call celebrities. But I promised you'd come up with one. Well, then you've learned a lesson. In the future, don't make promises on behalf of other people. Patty, why is it so important that you be chairman of the dance? Because I feel I can do a better job of it. If I run it, we're going to have a ball. If she runs it, we're going to have a bomb. Only if I don't get a name, I'll never be able to prove that to them. You could look through the newspaper and see what celebrities are in town and call them. That's a great idea. You see, she's always thinking. Thanks, cuz. I'll do it right now. Skip. Kathy, why do you waste your good ideas on her? I can turn them into money. <laughs> I hope she gets the chairmanship. Well, if it depends on her coming up with a celebrity, I wouldn't count on it. Oh, don't underestimate Patty, Uncle Martin. You have no idea how resourceful she is. Yes, I have, and it terrifies me. Oh. No, no, he wouldn't recognize my name. Oh, then, would you please tell him that there's this high school prom, and I... Hello? 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 Snob. <laughs> Bobby Darren. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Have you called anyone yet? Yeah. You can forget Bobby Darren. He's too short. Patty, I have to study. Would you mind turning that off, please? What's the mob singing? The mob? What's that? Oh, oh look, Kathy. I know you're an opera lover, but everybody's heard of the mob. I'm afraid I haven't. What is it? Oh, look at him, Kathy. Isn't he the bitter? He looks like a sheepdog. <laughs> Don't you dare call Bertram Bristol a sheepdog. Bertram Bristol? Mm-hmm. That's his name. Bertram Bristol. Patty, may I see that album, please? Oh, I don't believe it. You don't believe what? <laughs> it can't be. But it is. What are you talking about? Binky Bristol. A boy I used to know. You knew the mop? Mm-hmm. When I went to school in England, we were classmates. You and Bertram Bristol? Yes. He had quite a crush on me. He always used to want to carry my books home from school. Oh, Kathy. I remember one night, he stood outside and serenaded me with his guitar. <gasps> what did you do? I'm afraid I let go with a pail of water. Even then, he couldn't sing. Kathy! Oh, Binky didn't mind. Imagine. Now he's the latest fad. Bertram Bristol is no fad. Look, look at the paper. He just arrived in New York. Look at all the kids at his hotel. It's incredible. Oh, to be in England now that Binky's here. <laughs> well, Kathy, you are going to see him, aren't you? What for? To find out if he's still pining for you. Of course not. Kathy, I just got the most marvelous idea. You want me to phone Binky at his hotel and ask him to come to the prom and sing a few songs. Right. Wrong. I won't do it. You have to. Patty Binky probably won't even remember me. And I'm sure he's far too busy. Look, Kathy, we're cousins, aren't we? And best friends. Now, I'd do anything for you. Yes, Patty. If you were on a ship and fell overboard, wouldn't I jump in to save you? Yes, Patty. And if you were in a burning building, wouldn't I rush in to pull you out? Yes, Patty. And if you were starving, wouldn't I offer to share my last crust of bread? Yes, Patty. Then don't you think it's about time you did something for me? <laughs> she won't budge. I don't get it. After all you've done for her, why is Kathy so stubborn? Because she has the soul of a mule. It's such a small favor. Of course it is. Look, if I were Kathy, I'd do it in a minute. Richard? What did I just say? Um, of course it is. No, no, no. After that. If you were Kathy, you'd do it in a minute. That's exactly what I said. Richard, shake hands, but genius. Huh? Sorry to be late. Well, you know why we're here today. Uh, yes, indeed. Are you ready to name this big star you can bring to the dance? Of course. Mr. President, if I'm appointed prom chairman, my first official act will be to announce that the guest celebrity will be none other than Bertram Bristol. Bertram Bristol? In person. The mop? <laughs> oh. What did you bring? Forget it. <laughs> hey, you got the job. Thank you, Mr. President. Are, are you sure you can deliver him? Of course. He's an old friend of the family. Uh, Patty. Come on, Richard. We mustn't keep dear Binky waiting. Binky? Mm-hmm. That's what his friends call him. Ta-ta. Wait a minute. How do we know Patty's telling the truth? Because Patty wouldn't tell a lie. That's right. She has too much character and integrity. That's right. And because she knows if she doesn't deliver the mop now, the class will tear her limb from limb. <laughs> That's right. Here it is. 1492. Well, that's the year Columbus discovered America. Maybe that's a good luck omen. Uh, do you think this is really going to work? Sure. When I called from the lobby, he said to come right up. Only he thought he was talking to Kathy. Will you stop splitting hairs? 
He shook my hand. Oh. Now, how can anyone be so Hector? He's just another ordinary human being. Yeah. Uh, are you sure you don't want me to go in there with you, Patty? Oh, positive. I can handle the spine by myself. I'll see you later. Okay. Come in. Mr. Bristol, come on, Kath. Look, it's me, the old bingo. Yes, of course. Hello, Binky. <laughs> That's more like it. Here, here, let's have a look at you. <laughs> oh, you're beautiful. Am I? Yeah. I like your hair, too. I love yours. Let's <laughs> have a bit of a talk, shall we? Come on, now. Do you want a drop of tea? No, thank you. Well, no tea. That doesn't sound like my Kathy. Oh, I'd love a cup. Yeah, of course. That's more like it. Here you are, dear. Oops. Little milk. Yeah. Whoa! It's been a long time, ducks. Hasn't it, though? Did you ever hear from any of the old gang? Old gang? Yeah, you know, Addy and Pat. Oh, Addy and Pat. Do you remember that night in the hall when I tried to kiss you? Why would you like living here in the States, eh? I love it. I live with my father's brother, Uncle Martin. And I go to school with my cousin, Patty. What a doll. Is she now? You'd love her. Yeah? Oh, I wish I had time to meet her. I think I could arrange that. Binky, my school is giving a dance and I was hoping you could drop by. Oh, I'd like that, Kath. Honest, I would. Then you come? Oh, I just haven't got the time, old girl. Oh, you could just come and say hello and then run. Oh, I'm much too busy, Kath. You see, there's this new album and rehearsing for the telly and... Oh, cool. Blimey, there it goes again. Be back in a jiff. Oh, but... You... Now what am I going to do? And because she knows if she doesn't deliver the mock now, the class will tear her limb from limb. Walter, honest, I tried. It's not my fault. And let this be a lesson to you. In the future, don't make promises on behalf of other people. Now you tell me. You could look through the newspaper and see what celebrities are in town and call them. You and your bright ideas. You're the one who got me into this in the first place. Were you talking to me? Oh, no. I was, uh, humming. Yeah, do you know that was on the phone? George Bassett. Good old George Bassett. How is he? Well, do you know him then? I never heard of him. Oh. Neither have I. <laughs> well, whoever he was, he tried to put the bite on me for 50 pounds. He did? Yeah, happens to me all the time now. I'm rich and famous. I am more hard luck stories. Hard luck stories? Yeah. And you know how soft-hearted I am? I can't never say no. Binky, I didn't want to tell you this before, but you know the dance my school is giving? It's practically a matter of life or death. Life or death? It's being given to raise money for someone who's in terrible trouble. Someone very dear to me. Yeah, not your uncle. He lost his job months ago, replaced by a machine. Oh, poor old blighter. Hasn't he gotten any money saved? Oh, not a penny. He's a terrible spendthrift. Well, that's a bit dodgy, isn't it? That's why we're having the dance, to raise enough money so that we won't starve. Well, why didn't you tell me this before, Kath? I was too embarrassed. Well, to tell your troubles to the old Binker. Binky, if I announced that you'd be at the dance, Everyone in school will buy tickets. And Uncle Martin will be saved. Kath, you try and keep me away. <laughs> I mean, thanks ever so. 
You're the better. Oh, uh, here's the address of my school. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you come there a week from Saturday at nine o'clock. All right, nine o'clock it is then. Thank you, Binky. You're wonderful. So are you, Kath. You're all right. Uh... <laughs> this should sell a million tickets. It's going to be the most successful prom the school's ever had. It sure was nice of Kathy to get him, wasn't it? Yeah. Hello, Patty. Oh, hi, Kath. We were just talking about you. Were you? Mm hmm Tell me, Patty. I'm dying to know. How did you ever get Bingy to agree to come? Oh, I just went over to his hotel and asked him. And he said yes, just like that? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, all actors are hams. Patty's uh, pretty persuasive. Did you tell him we're cousins? Uh, yeah, I think I did mention it. I think I'll call him. No! I don't think you should do that. Why not? Uh, well, Kathy, he, uh, he didn't remember you. He didn't. I'm surprised. We were rather close. Well, you know how it is. Well, he's met millions of people. He's a celebrity. Everyone's after him. Well, I'm not. And I'm certainly not going to phone him. That's a good idea. But when I see him at the dance, I'm going to tell him exactly what I think of him. What did the man say? Oh, what a tangled web we weave. He was right. You know, Richard, I think I've done it again. If Pinky Bristol shows up at the dance, Kathy's gonna hate me. And if he doesn't show up, limb from limb. It's 9.15. He's late. I know. He's not coming. I can feel it. Why couldn't I let Sue Ellen be chairman? Why'd I get up this morning? Why was I born? Patty, cut it out. You're getting hysterical. Here he comes. Here I am, Kath. Sorry I'm late. I'll come straight on from rehearsals. Can't stop long, though. Okay. I like your hair that way. Oh. Uh, I wear it this way for parties. Oh, uh, Binky, this is Richard Harrison. Uh, like I. Oh, hi. Well, uh... Is he yours? No, no, he belongs to my cousin, Kathy, Patty. <laughs> oh, if you wait right there, I'll go introduce you. Hello, students. Fasten your seatbelts. He's here. The one and only Bertram Bristol. <laughs> And that is that I wouldn't have been here at all tonight if it wasn't for my dear old friend, Kathy Lane. Oh, 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 
So thanks a lot. You've been a lovely audience. Ta-da! <laughs> Old girl. Lovely bunch of kids out there. Yes. I certainly do appreciate your coming to leave, but I know you must run along now, so goodbye, Binky. Cool, blimey, it's a blooming mirage. <laughs> you didn't tell me your cousin Patty was your spitting image. I'm Kathy. And the reason I didn't tell you about my cousin Patty is because I haven't seen you until just now. You mean. I lost my head. Patty, how could you do a thing like this? I'm sorry, Kath. I, I apologize, Mr. Bristol. You see, when, when Kathy wouldn't go to see you, I couldn't figure out any other way to get to you. So I posed as Kathy. I so it was you who come to my suite. And you mean to tell me you weren't going to call on your old friend Binky? Binky, I thought that you... You've got a lot to thank your cousin for. Come on, late. Come on. We can talk over old times at rehearsals. Rehearsal? Yeah, for a television show. Come on, we'd better be going now. But I... Don't fight it, Kath. Fifty million women are dying to take your place. All right. Cheers, old girl. You've done a good deed. It was the best evening of my whole life. Sure were a smash. Imagine being made permanent prom chairman. Gee, who are you going to get next year? Maybe the president. You know what's so great, Rich? I pulled the whole thing off without getting in trouble. Patty! Hi, Mama. Papa. Hi. How was the dance? A blast. Martian green. Well, that's nice. Patty, I just got this note. Now, it says, uh, keep your chin up, Governor. And there was a check for $100 enclosed. Can you explain that? Oh, no. <laughs> Here's your supper, sis. Oh, thank you, Rob. Put on that bed. You're lucky it isn't bread and water. I deserve it. How long are you in for? Six months. With time out for good behavior. Oh, here comes the warden. Excuse me, son. Yes, sir. I'll go downstairs and ask Mom to bake you a cake with a file on <laughs> Can the prisoner make a statement? Yes. I'm sorry. My only excuse is I got carried away. Patty, I understand that what you were doing was for a um, worthy cause, but you behaved outrageously. I acted like a gleep. You lied to Mr. Bristol, you imposed on him shamefully, and you put me in a very embarrassing situation. Yes, sir. So, until further notice, there will be no dates for you. Yes, sir. And I am confiscating all of these albums. This household has heard the last flat note from that British nightingale. Yes, sir. Never leave me. Oh, 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 don't deceive me. Oh, oh, Who the devil put that on? I don't know. Listen. Oh, 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 Mason. Will you oh, throw that thing out of here? Hold your case and, oh, 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 open up your heart. Open up your heart. Open up Uncle your Martin, heart. Uncle Martin, look who I brought home to dinner. <laughs> Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find they laugh alike. They walk.
talk alike, good times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two. Did will sit in on the faculty meetings and will be put in charge of some of the classes. This way he or she will get a practical working knowledge of the job. I bet I could tell him a few things about how to run this school. <laughs> right into the ground. Patty, make a great principal. Yeah. Wouldn't Callie be surprised if they picked me instead of her? Patty, would you stand up, please? I'm sure the whole class would be interested in what you were discussing. I was just saying that I thought I'd make a good principal. <laughs> All right, that will do. I'm not sure Brooklyn Heights High is ready for you, Patty. <laughs> Richard? Richard? Yes, Mrs. Lesson? What are you reading? Uh, it's a magic book. If you'd like to try some real magic, let's see you get a passing mark in this course. <laughs> Mrs. Lesson? Yes, Maggie? Mr. Brewster would like to see Patty Lane. He picked me! <laughs> Patty, you may go to Mr. Brewster's office. Congratulations! Wait till Kathy hears they pick me instead of her. The first thing I'm gonna do is shorten the hours. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet! Hi, Holmes. Mr. Brewster wanted to see me. Yes, he's expecting you, Patty. Go right in. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Brewster. Hello, Patty. I suppose you know why I've sent for you. I, uh, have an idea. As a matter of fact, I've kind of been expecting it. I might as well tell you the name of our student principal for the week. Yes? Your cousin, Kathy. <laughs> Here's Kathy who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves a rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet! Still their cousins, identical cousins, and you find they laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. basketball game this afternoon, Patty? I wouldn't miss it for anything in the world. What time do you want to meet tonight? Let's make it about 7.35. That'll give me a half hour for dinner and five minutes to do my homework. <laughs> Let's see. All right. What's playing at the Rialto? I don't know. Mr. Brewster has asked me to take over this class for Miss Riley today. Would you please open your books to page 130? Can I ask a question? Certainly, Patty. What's playing at the Rialto? <laughs> I don't know. Would you open your book, please? Our homework for last night was on the purification of water. Water that is fit to drink is called what? Lemonade. <laughs> Sue Ellen? It's called potable. That's right. Patty, what happens if you drink melted snow? You get cold tonsils. <laughs> Maggie? Uh, pure snow has no iodides. You get a goiter. Hey, then you can hold up your stocking. Oh. <laughs> Patty, may we go on with the lesson? Sure. Teacher. Thank you. What happens if you put charcoal in water? You get wet charcoal. <laughs> Patty, 
Dirty water? <laughs> All right. If I hear one more word out of you, Patty, I'm afraid I'll have to give you a demerit. Oh, please don't do that, teacher. Think of my family. This could leave a spot that could blight my whole life. <laughs> Consider yourself blighted. Patty Lane. One demerit. See that? My own cousin stabbed me in the back. <laughs> we'll make that another demerit. Don't lose your head, Patty. She, she's serious. Richard? Oh, don't give him a demerit. Just put it on my check. <laughs> I'll do that. Be my guest. Now, may we go on with the lesson? The lesson is never trust a relative. <laughs> You all realize that we're having a chemistry test tomorrow. Gee, Wilkers, I, I broke my test too. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's hold it down. <clears throat> Kathy's just trying to do her job. Let's try and help. Thank you, Patty. As for the demerits. Kathy, how is your class getting along? Just fine, Mr. Brewster. Is that a demerit list? Uh, no, not really. Patty Lane, one demerit. One demerit. One demerit. Mr. Brewster, Patty didn't really do anything. You see... I do see. I realize this wasn't easy for you, Kathy. I respect you for it. Patty? I want to see you in my office after school. You can plan on spending the rest of the afternoon there. Oh, but there's a big basketball game this afternoon. You can read about it in the bugle. Keep up the good work, Kathy. Any tease and traitor? Please, Mr. Brewster, you've got to let me go. I'm the team's mascot. No. I'm in charge of refreshments. No. I'm responsible for the tickets? No. Mr. Brewster, this is the big game of the year. The team can't win without me there. You're going to have to try. Just because my former cousin Kathy came up here and said a lot of terrible things... Patty, were you talking in class? Yes, Mr. Brewster. Repeatedly after you had been warned? Yes, Mr. Brewster. Would you have carried on like that if Mrs. Riley was in charge of the class? No, Mr. Brewster. But Kathy's just my... Kathy was put in charge by me. There were two reasons for that, Patty. First, because it was an honor that she merited. Second, because it was an opportunity to test the class in self-discipline. When I want fun and games in this school, I'll schedule them myself. <laughs> you stay in the outer office and do your homework. When can I leave? When the basketball game is over. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, darling. Yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't get home for dinner. That editorial meeting went on longer than I expected. Interesting? Dull. Things have not been dull around here. Oh? Where are the kids? In the dining room. Oh, I think I'll pop in and say hello. I'd suggest that you go by dog sled. Dog sled? I wouldn't be surprised if it started to snow. You don't mean Patty and Kathy are still feuding. They make the Hatfields and the McCoys look like Damon and Pythias. Would you like some milk? No, thank you, Ross. How about you, Patty? No. How about some cake, Kathy? Yes, I think I will, Ross. Patty? No. Well, good evening, children. How's everything tonight? I'm all right, Dad. That's about it. Ross, dear, if you're finished, why don't you run along? Uh-uh. I think it's going to get interesting. <laughs> Girls, now you have a problem. I think maybe I can help you settle it. 
I've sat on a few arbitration boards, you know. The most important thing is to sit down face to face and discuss your problem. You're absolutely right, Papo. And I think that makes great sense. And I'm willing to do it any time. As long as she is not in the room. <laughs> She's really mad. She didn't even eat a dessert. I'm going to have a little talk with her. Please don't, Uncle Martin. Patty's right. She's being blamed for something that I did. Kathy, you're not being very logical. Patty's being punished for what she did. I was going to throw that demerit list away when Mr. Brewster walked in. You're all hard. Boss. Please don't ask me to stay. I've got homework to do. Kath, what kind of a world do you think this would be without discipline? I mean, if everybody could do exactly as he pleased. Chaotic, I suppose. You bet it would. Now, Patty is a natural-born leader. But her problem is that she's been leading for so long that uh, she's just never gotten a taste of what it feels like to be led. So she really needs to learn discipline. I think you're right about sitting down face to face. And I'm sure I can explain that to her. If she'll let me in. She'll let you in? Oh, of course she'll let you in. Have you seen our room? It looks like no man's land. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Good luck to all of us. <laughs> Expecting World War Three? It's already started. You stick to your side of the room, and I'll stick to mine. That's going to be difficult. Yeah? Why is that? Because I'm on your side. Ha! Patty, I'm sorry about what happened. But it wasn't all my fault. Oh, listen, why don't you put it in writing and slip it under the door? <laughs> oh, boy. Where are you going to set up the machine guns? <laughs> Richard's downstairs. Shall I send him up? Tell him I'll be right down. I'll give him the word, General. <laughs> Patty, let's have a truce. That's what you want? That's what we both want. Good. I couldn't stay mad at you anyway. Friend. Friend. Come on to the movies with us. I was going to stay in it. As soon as I get dressed, I'll meet you downstairs. Check it, check. I'm glad we made up. I feel a lot better. So do I. You mean you and Kathy are talking again? Sure. Who can stay mad at Kathy? I thought it was the end of a beautiful friendship. Never. I really love that kid. Well, I'm glad to see the Cold War's over. Hey, Maggie, that's a cute sweater. Oh, thanks. So's yours. You want to trade? Sure. Okay. <laughs> what gets into them? Don't ask me. I'll never understand women if I live to be 30. <laughs> Great basketball game this afternoon. Yeah. Just tie score right down to the last quarter. Yeah. You should have seen old Butterfingers dribbling the ball down for the winning basket and he fell flat on his face. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen him. Oh, what happened then? Well, didn't Kathy tell you? Kathy? How would Kathy know? Well, she went to the game. Kathy went to the game? Yes, yeah, she kind of went with me. What do you mean she kind of went with me? <laughs> well, you couldn't go, and Mr. Brewster asked her to be in charge of a refreshment stand, so she... So while I was up there cracking my head on calcium carbonate, Patty sneaked off to the basketball game with my boyfriend. She didn't sneak off, Patty. It, it was broad daylight. Hey, <laughs> Mitty. You Benedict Arnold, don't you come near me. <laughs> Patty, are you asleep? I know you're awake. How was the movie? 
I checked to see what was playing at the Rialto. It was seven empty coffins. The same picture you saw last week. Do you know? That makes 14 empty coffins. <laughs> I called Dr. Fair tonight. I was worried about you. He said that if you didn't use your voice, your mouth could freeze shut. They'd have to feed you through a straw. I told him how you were behaving. He said not to worry about it. He said a lot of seven-year-old children act this way. Patty, it wasn't my idea to go to the game. Mr. Brewster sent me. All right. Don't talk to me. But if you wake up in the morning with very long ears, don't blame me. Hear that? It was thunder. Oh, I thought maybe it was cannon fire from the girls' bedroom. <laughs> what happened? I thought that they were all made up. Patty claims that Kathy broke the truce, retroactively. We may have to refer this to the United Nations. Mustard on your sandwich? Yeah, thanks. Oh, we're pretty lucky at that, I guess. I mean, they usually get along very well together. Patty never reacted so strongly before to being disciplined. I think there's more than that involved. Oh? Patty never said so, but I have a feeling she was expecting Mr. Brewster to appoint her. Oh, now we're beginning to get somewhere. So Patty's ego was injured twice. Once when she lost out to Kathy and once when she was punished. Well, now I know we're going to have to refer this to the UN. <laughs> Isn't there something we can do, Martin? It's killing both of them to fight with each other, but Patty's too stubborn to admit it. She gets that from your side of the family. <laughs> she has a lot of pride. She gets that from my side of the family. Martin, why is it that everything good Patty does comes from your side of the family and everything bad she does comes from my side? Couldn't you sleep, yeah. Kathy? I'm afraid not. Patty's up there threatening me in her sleep. I told you it wasn't thunder. Would you like a sandwich? No, thank you. It's just a glass of milk. I'll get it. Cass, how long does this appointment of yours last, anyway? Too long. Until the end of this week. By Friday, I won't have a friend left in the world. I wish he'd never picked me. Yeah, if he just picked Patty. Kath, do you have the right to appoint anybody in the class to help you? I don't know, Uncle Martin. I suppose I could if I needed help. Kathy, you need help. <laughs> Okay, everybody, hold on to your hats. Guess who's teaching this class? Me! Yeah. I guess Kathy bit off a little more than she could chew, so she asked Mr. Brewster if I could help her out. Poor kid. Well, the old master's here, so everybody, let's get to work. My motto is, everyone gets an A. <laughs> I guess this is the hour for history, so let's crack our books at page, uh, 273. The war with Spain. Si, si, senorita. <laughs> okay. You all be on the Spanish side, and I'll be on the English side. Now, uh, this beef wasn't just with Spain and England. There were a lot of other countries stewing around in it. Portugal and France. It's kind of a beef stew. <laughs> Too. Well, now that we know what's cooking. Uh, who knows why England went to war with Spain? I know, Teach. The tamales were too hot. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. Turkey was involved. There wasn't enough dressing. <laughs> All right, fellas, look. I like a joke as well as the next guy. 
But we have 15 pages of history to get through today. Okay. Who was Ferdinand? He was a bull! Oh. Oh. Okay, if you don't want to do it here, I'll just assign it for homework. Homework? That's right. Okay. I want you to identify for me Charles V, Henry IV, Philip... I know who Philip is. Who? He's my cousin. He has a little meat market. <laughs> That'll be enough out of you, Alfred. She thinks she's Mr. Brewster. All right, Alfred. That's one demerit. Excuse me. Don't worry about it, folks. I'll take care of it. You've heard of the great Houdini? Well, I'm Horrible Harrison and his magical bag of tricks. <laughs> A little wave of the handkerchief? That's hey! right! All right, the show's over. Let's get back to the world of Spain. Another magical effect of the handkerchief? Hey! Anybody want to buy a sock? <laughs> If you do one more trick, I'm going to give you ten demerits. She has a great sense of humor. <laughs> You've heard of a barber pole? Oh, I've got one right with me. All right, oh, Richard. Hey. You're right. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can I have that list, madam? <gasps> Richard! How are you getting along, Patty? Oh, just fine, Mr. Brewster. We were just, uh, discussing the war with Spain. What's that, a demerit list? Oh, uh, no, sir. Uh, I mean, uh, not exactly. It, it's more... Well, looks like you were having your own little war in here. Uh, not really, Mr. Brewster. Richard Harrison. Yes, sir? I want to see you in my office at the close of school today. As one of our great presidents once said, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. <laughs> Ten demerits, and I gave them to him with my own little pencil. Mr. Brewster will give him life. Did his tricks work? That's beside the point, Ross. He shouldn't have been doing them in the class. He'll never speak to me again. And I don't blame him. What would have happened if you hadn't stopped him, Patty? Well, how do I know? I'm not a philosopher. I'm just a poor, sick kid who's lost her boyfriend. He'll come back, Patty. Yeah? By the time he works off those demerits, he'll be too old for me. <laughs> Guess who? <laughs> I didn't come over to hit you. I came over to tell you that I can't take you to a movie tonight. I don't blame you for being angry with me, Richard. You have every right to be. I tried to get Mr. Brewster to take back the demerits, but... I'm not mad at you, Patty. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty proud of you. Proud of me? You bet. You had a job to do, and you did it. You see, Patty? I can't take you to the movies because I've got about six hours of homework to do. Oh, Richard. I'm sorry. I'll tell you what. I'll come and sit with you while you do it. It's the least I can do. Come on. Good night, group. Patty, tomorrow's the last day. Would you like to take over some classes? Certainly. As one of our great presidents once said, if you can't stand the heat, Stay out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find they laugh alike, they walk alike.
like at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are... Patty, you'd better hurry. You're going to be late for class. I can't find my history book. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'd probably never pass the test anyway. Patty, <laughs> why don't you try positive thinking? Okay. I'm positive I can't pass the history test. <laughs> I'll see you later. Hi, Patty. Hi. Are you going to the shake shop after school tonight? I guess so. Why? Would you do me a favor? Tell Mr. Anderson I won't be there. Sure. You mean you'd be late? No, I'm quitting. You're quitting your job at the shake shop? Oh, I can't help it. My grandmother's sick and I have to go back to Detroit with my folks this afternoon. Oh. Well, who's going to take your place? Oh, he'll find someone. The kids are all standing in line for that job. George? How much does he pay you? Fifteen dollars a week to work after school and on Saturdays. And, uh, all the ice cream I can eat. All the ice cream you can eat? You'll take care of it for me, won't you? George, consider it taken care of. <laughs> Cathy's live most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Cathy's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Cathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe. And Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins are two of a kind. Hello, Patty. What would you like? A job. Oh, I don't need any extra help. I have George. Not anymore, you don't. His grandmother's sick and he had to go to Detroit. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'll have to get someone else. That's what I was just telling you. Oh, I need someone with experience. You've never worked behind a fountain. Mr. Anderson, I spend more time in this place than I do at home. <laughs> I was thinking about a boy. Think about a girl. Look, I'm a leader, right? Right. I'll lead my flock right in here. <laughs> this place will be so jammed they won't be able to get in the doors. Why, look, it's Donald Donut. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Donut. There's a three-hour wait. Oh, and Clara Cupcake. Oh, you want Patty's table. I'm terribly sorry, Miss Cupcake. You'll have to stand in line like the rest of them. You've been here since noon? I am sorry. Yes, yes, I know. She does make the best sodas and Sundays in town. Mm. Oh, I believe you're next, Miss. Oh, no, no, it won't always be like this. We're moving to larger quarters next month. What do you say, Mr. Anderson? Please. It gets pretty busy in here, Patty. You'll have to take care of the fountain, wait on tables, check the receipts. Will you give me a chance? Well, all right. We'll try you out. Fifteen dollars a week. And? And uh, all the ice cream you can eat. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, I'll kill myself for you. Oh, I don't think that would be necessary. <laughs> what do you want me to do first? Uh, you'd better check your ice cream. <laughs> Patty, can we have some service, please? Uh, sure, in a second. Yeah. I'll have a kitchen sink, chocolate, strawberry, and tutti frutti, all the nuts, no cherry, and plenty of whipped cream. One kitchen sink, chocolate, strawberry, tutti frutti, hold the nuts, no cherry, and plenty of whipped cream. I'll have a flaming desire with a peach instead of a banana, rocky road and orange ice, and hold the syrup. <laughs> One flaming desire, peach instead of banana, rocky road and orange ice, and hold the syrup. One kitchen sink, chocolate, strawberry, tutti frutti, and hold the nuts, no cherry, and plenty of whipped cream. I'll have a pink elephant, hold the elephant, an extra dip of banana ice cream, no whipped cream, and plenty of syrup. One pink elephant, hold the elephant, an extra dip of banana ice cream, no whipped cream, and plenty of syrup. One flaming desire. Peach instead of banana, rocky road and orange ice, and hold the syrup. One kitchen sink, chocolate strawberry tutti frutti, hold the nuts, no cherry, and plenty of whipped cream. A chocolate soda, please. Okay, chocolate soda, fine. Wonder how long Patty's gonna hold that job. As long as she wants to. 
terribly difficult. I bet she doesn't last a week. Oh, I bet she does. Patty has a wonderful memory. Yeah, that's right. She does. <sighs> Gee, I'm terribly sorry. I forgot one of those orders. What did you want? <laughs> Forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-five, fifty. Fifty-fifty. Five dollars short. <laughs> Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, one, two, three. Mr. Anderson, the most amusing thing just happened. <laughs> I uh, was just checking the cash receipts, and I found I was five dollars short. Oh, what do you do in a case like that? Fire someone. That's what you do. Have you finished checking out your receipts, Patty? Uh, yes, Mr. Anderson. Did it check out all right? Yes, sir. Uh, to the penny. <laughs> you are, Mr. Anderson. Fifty dollars and fifty cents. Fine. You can run along now, Patty. You must be pretty tired. Oh, no. Not me, sir. I'm uh, strong as a horse. You do want me back, don't you? Oh, I certainly do. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Good night. <laughs> Hello, Patty. Hi, Papa. What happened to you? I got a job. You didn't? Mm-hmm. I told you you'd be shocked. I'm working uh, every day after school and all day Saturday. What? I think that's wonderful. Where are you working? At the shake shop. How'd all this come about? I heard about a vacancy. I applied for it. I got it. Bene, vide, vicky. I came. I saw. I conquered. Thanks. <laughs> How much do you get paid? Fifteen dollars a week. And all the blisters I can raise. <laughs> she gets to eat all the ice cream she wants. Boy, I'd work for nothing. <laughs> uh, Papa, speaking of working for nothing, could I have a little loan from you? Well, now that you're part of this country's labor force, I guess you're a pretty good financial risk. How much would you like? Five dollars. Thanks, Papa. I'll give it back to you on payday. Oh, and, uh, since I'm practically earning my own living now, I won't be needing my allowance anymore. Can I have her allowance? May I have her allowance? May I have her allowance? No. Well, if I wasn't going to get it anyway, why did I have to get grammatical? <laughs> Hello, darling. Well, what do you think of our working girl? I think it's wonderful. How are your feet? Great. Look at the condition of her feet, and not a complaint out of her. You know, you picked a pretty tough job, Patty. Do you think you're going to be able to stick it out? She'll stay there until the ice cream runs out. <laughs> sure, I'll stick it out. What do you think I am, some kind of quitter? No. I think you're some kind of wonderful girl. I'm very proud you're my daughter. Thanks, Papa. If I had the choice of all the sisters in the world, I'd only want you. Thank you, Ross. Now can I come in tomorrow and have a free soda? <laughs> N-O. <laughs> Hi, Ross. Hi, Richard. Is the queen of the ice cream parlor home? <laughs> home? You know, she refused to give me a free soda. My own sister. Oh, you can afford to buy one. It isn't the same thing. There's something about a free soda. <laughs> like, hi, everybody. Oh, good evening, Richard. Hello, Richard. You all set for the strike and spare bit? I assume that means you're going bowling. <laughs> Bowling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing. I'm ready. Let's go bowling. 
she all right? Patty's had a very hard day, Richard. You mean she's knocked out from those few hours she worked in the shake shop? Are we going bowling or not? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right away. <laughs> she's going to be the life of the party. Richard, I think it would be better if Patty didn't go. I'm sure she'll feel fine tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> Come on, Patty. I'll help you. You understand, Richard? No, I sure don't. I mean, Patty and I have gone dancing for four hours without stopping. She was as fresh as a daisy. Well, that comes under the heading of pleasure. You see, what Patty did today was work. Yeah, I think it was quite a psychological shock to her nervous system. Boy, I sure was proud of Patty today. You should have seen her. She was racing around taking orders and, and delivering milk and working behind the fountain. We all went to the rally without her. She stayed on and worked. Boy, she's quite a girl. Oh, well, we've decided to keep her. Not much longer. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, uh, just that sometime in the future, I, I hope that... Uh... <laughs> Hi. Drink your milk. Boy, I'd like to get my hands on whoever invented cows. <laughs> Warning. Warning. Where are the girls? Kathy's already had her breakfast. Patty's still asleep. At this hour? Isn't she feeling well? She's just tired. She's been carrying trays in her sleep all night. <laughs> I have to get accustomed to the idea of Patty's being a working girl. Don't get too used to it. She won't last that long. Patty may surprise you. She's already surprised me. She isn't going to give me a free soda. I brag to all the kids at school that my sister's working at the shake shop. I'm a laughing stock among the younger generation. <laughs> a thing like this could give me a traumatic experience. Whatever that means. That means you've been watching too many doctor movies on the late show. If I watch just one more, I'll bet I could be a brain surgeon. <laughs> Scout. Suture. Natalie. Don't look at me. He knows he's not supposed to watch the show. Then why do you watch them, Ross? Because they're there. <laughs> well, I don't mind them being there. Just make sure you're not. Yes, sir. Well, there goes a whole career down the drain. Patty, get up. Oh, hold the flame. Patty. time is it? Let me put it this way. If you walk in the classroom door in about ten minutes, you'll be just in time for your chemistry class. <laughs> ten minutes? Why didn't you wake me up? We've been trying to since seven o'clock. Oh. Oh. Are you sure this job is a good idea? Certainly. Where else can you get paid to go through a physical fitness program? <laughs> Hi, I'm sorry it took so long. One, three more. Okay. Very busy. <laughs> 
Shake before you go. <laughs> You've reached the point of no return. Point of no return? That's what I call it when I've had a new clerk long enough so I begin showing a profit again. <laughs> Tomorrow is Saturday, so I'll expect you to open the store at 8 in the morning. 8 o'clock in the <laughs> Don't ruin your appetite. No, I won't. Do you wish Patty would get home? I can't wait to spring my little surprise on her. She'd be so thrilled. So you, you don't suppose she's seen the papers yet, do you? I'm sure she hasn't. Her job keeps her pretty busy. She really loves it, doesn't she? I'll bet she wishes she'd taken a job a long time ago. Martin. It's the last one. I can't help myself. <laughs> Patty, you look terrible. I feel like the inside of a milkshake. <laughs> I can't keep it up any longer. Then don't. Don't worry. I won't. Do you know where I'm going to be at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning? Sleep. And I'm going to sleep right through till summer. <laughs> Boy, no wonder they call them soda jerks. <laughs> I just handed him my resignation. Hello, darling. Hi. Well, home is the hunter, home from the hill, and the sailor, home from the sea. How's our little working girl? I want to talk to you about that. I've got something I want to read to you first. This is my editorial in today's Chronicle. <clears throat> in an age when teenagers are too often thought of as a group of juvenile delinquents, perhaps it's time that someone pointed out the other side of the coin. Time some tribute was paid to the hundreds of thousands of decent youngsters who are our junior citizens. Because of a few loud-mouthed, ill-mannered hooligans, we tend to forget that the great majority of teenagers are courteous, respectful young men and women, determinedly training themselves for places as leaders of tomorrow's America. This writer is as guilty as other parents in tending to underestimate our children. But we have a teenage daughter in our house. We watched her begin a job a few days ago, and we confess with shame that we thought it would be a a passing fancy, losing out to more important things in life, such as movies, basketball, and television. We were wrong. This is our apology to her and to the rest of young America. Thank you, Papa. I don't know what to say. Oh, you don't have to say anything, honey. Actions speak louder than words. Well, uh, I think I'll... Go up and have a little rest. Excuse me. I have to uh, be at the shake shop at 8 o'clock in the morning. Patty, you can't go on like this. I'm hooked. If I quit, I'll let Papo down. I'm sure if you told your father what this job was doing to you, He'd understand. He'd understand I'm a quitter. I don't know how I got mixed up in this. But I seem to be representing teenage America. <laughs> you know what he wrote about me? Yes. But it wasn't meant to be your epitaph. <laughs> oh, 
how long are you going to keep working? Until I'm old and stupid. I'm already stupid or I wouldn't be in this mess. Well, I see we have a new conscript. What's a conscript? A conscript is someone who's been drafted for a job. You mean kind of like a slave? Kind of. That's me. <laughs> Thanks, we're almost through. Say, did, uh, did Patty go out? No, I think she went to bed. This early? Martin, do you think this job's too much for Patty? I have a feeling she's working too hard. Oh, I think she's having the time of her life. I worked in a drugstore when I was a kid. I had a ball. You weren't cheerleader, editor of the school paper, captain of the girls' hockey team, and mascot of the basketball team. I wasn't captain of the girls' hockey team. I think Patty's doing too much. Well, maybe she should give up some of her other activities. I think it would kill her if she had to give up her job at the shake shop. This will kill me. Do you know how much a tray full of flaming desires weighs? <laughs> 10,000 pounds. <laughs> Patty, would you like me to substitute for you tomorrow? Patty, that's the greatest thing I've ever heard. No, I couldn't do that. Why not? Because it would make a phony out of Papo's editorial. I appreciate it, Kath. But I got myself into this one, and I'll have to get myself out of it. I want to talk to you. Hi, Richard. I thought we were supposed to have a date last night. I've given all that up. Given all what up? Uh, dating, cheerleading, school paper, and you. You're kidding. No, I decided to become a drudge. For how long? Until I'm too old to work for Mr. Anderson anymore and he throws me out. <laughs> You'll have to find someone younger to go with, Richard. Well, why don't you just quit? I can't. Become an institution. Mom and Pop came into the shake shop yesterday. They just sat there, watching me. <laughs> seen the looks on their faces. No, I'm... Uh, I'm afraid it's, uh, goodbye, Richard. Patty, well, uh, why don't we... No, uh, Richard, there's, there's no point in discussing it. There's nothing that could... Richard, will you take me dancing tonight? Dancing? Well, you just said... I've changed my mind. Look who's back. <laughs> I'm back. Oh, George. <laughs> I love you. Say, so isn't it about time that Patty got home? Yes, they got an early start. They were going to two movies, a newsreel theater, and the bowling alley. <laughs> of course, you know, I'm, uh, I'm glad that George's grandmother is feeling better, but uh, it's too bad Patty had to give up her job, isn't it? Was she very disappointed about it, Kath? Oh, I'm sure she was, Uncle Martin, but she'll get over it. I won't. There goes my last chance for free ice cream soda. Well, not necessarily. Hi, group. Hi. Guess who just bowled 240? I did. Spoil sport. <laughs> well, Penny, I was just about to spring my big surprise. You wrote another editorial. No, it's even better than that. On my way home tonight, I stopped off at the shake shop. You did? Yep. I had a little talk with George. With George? Mm-hmm. We need a copy boy on the paper, and George is taking the job. Mr. Anderson said that he'll expect you at the shake shop tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find they laugh alike. They walk alike. They talk.
Sometimes they even talk to light. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. Hey, I wonder where this picture album was. <laughs> What's so funny? You. This picture was taken a few days after you came here. I didn't look like that. Oh, yes, you did. I look so foreign. I'll never forget how excited we were when we knew you were going to come to live with us. I was pretty excited too, Patty. Being brought up in Europe was fun. But Father was right. It was time I got to know about America. None of us even knew what you looked like. All I knew was that my glamorous cousin who'd lived all over the world was going to come to stay with us. Even Richard was pretty excited. He came over that morning before we went to the airport. He couldn't wait for you to get here. Has your cousin Kathy arrived yet? Her plane's due in an hour. We're leaving for the airport now. That's a big choice, isn't it? Coming all the way from Scotland to live with you. Well, I've made my mind up, Patty. You have? I've narrowed it down to you and Sue Ellen. And I've decided to give you my pin. Oh, Richard. You can see that everything was under control in that department. But in the next room, Papa was having his daily war with J.R. J.R. may be the publisher of the New York Chronicle, but I'm still the managing editor. Fed up with his changing my editorials. What? I know he only changed one word, but the word was don't. I don't know when I'm coming in. For two cents, I'd hop a jet for Tahiti and never come back. Things are improving. Last time it was Alaska we didn't go to. Hey, <laughs> Oregon, he's driving me out of my mind. If I've told him once, I've told him... It'll a... be late, Dad. Let's hurry. If we're not at the airport to meet Kathy, she might turn around and go back to Europe. Oh, yeah, we better get going. I wonder what Kathy will be like. I'm nervous. Isn't that silly? Oh, of course it's silly. She'll be wonderful. After all, she's my side of the family. <laughs> As it turned out, the traffic was terrible. And we missed the plate. When we got to the airport, you'd gone. Naturally, we were worried. But none of us had any idea that in less than an hour, our innocent little visitor was going to destroy the whole Lane family, single-handed. <laughs> Leave Kathy's lip post everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Kathy's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair, but they're cousins. The adores a minuet, the ballet russe, and crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet, still they're cousins, identical cousins, and you find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. Mr. Castle, I finally reached his house. The housekeeper said Mr. Lane left very early this morning for the airport. Hmm. Just exactly what did Mr. Lane say when you talked to him this morning? He said that for two cents he'd get on a jet and never come back. But he was joking. Ah. I'm not laughing. Nobody is indispensable around here except me, Miss Gordon. <laughs> Lane can be replaced. He has exactly one hour. Yes, Mr. Castle. We got jammed up on the expressway, and there's no sign of her here at the airport. There hasn't been any word from her at all. Oh, I haven't seen hot the hair of her. Well, she has the address she probably had for the house. We'll be right home. Isn't that Mr. Lane's daughter? It sure is. Mr. Castle's office. Oh, am I glad to see you. Where's your father? My father's in Glasgow. He's done it. Excuse me, but I'm looking for Mr. M Martin Lane. Quit. Martin Lane wouldn't quit this paper. He's indispensable and he knows it. <laughs> Who said he quit? His daughter. She's here. He's in Scotland. Don't be ridiculous, Miss Gordon. What would he be doing in Scotland? Probably sitting on the bonny banks of Loch Lomond fishing. Very well. If that's the way he wants it, that's the way he's going to get it. Clean out his desk and send for Albert Marcus. I'll have a word with that young lady. Yo, yo, janitor. 
You, janitor. Take that name off the door right now. Yes, sir. And as for you, young lady, you can take a message to your father. I hope he enjoys living in Scotland. Isn't Mr. Lane employed here anymore? No. Perhaps that's why he couldn't meet me at the airport. I'll try him at home. Hello. I'm here. Well, don't just stand there. Go clean your room. It's a mess. Folks will be back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> It's just trying to get to the window. Oh, Lanka. She's lost. She might have gone to the police. Maybe she did. I'll call. Morning, Ross. I'll bet they're falling apart down there. JR probably thinks I'm halfway to Tahiti by now. She's here. It's her. It's you. Hi, Richard. Come on in. No, thank you. I just came to give you a message from Sue Ellen. She says to tell you she is crazy about my pin. <laughs> Sue Ellen? I thought he was going to pin you, dear. He'll come back when he gets hungry. <laughs> Glad to have you here. Come and sit down there. You must be tired. Are you hungry? Yeah, we'll make you something to eat. No, thank you, Uncle Martin. Tomorrow, I think I'll take you downtown to the office and show you around. Oh, I'd like that. What work are you in? Well, I'm managing editor of the New York Daily Chronicle. I mean, what work are you in now? <laughs> I'm the managing editor of the New York Daily Chronicle. <laughs> They were scraping your name off the door. Don't be ridiculous. They wouldn't. <laughs> New York Daily Chronicle. Hello. Uh, what's the name of your managing editor? Albert Marcus. Would you like to be connected? <laughs> Albert 
Marcus. He couldn't wait to get rid of me. <laughs> never forget that day. None of us will. Papo lost his job. I lost Richard. I felt like a jinx. I was ready to turn around and go back home. I'm glad you didn't. Look at all the excitement we would have missed. I know. I guess the first time we realized the possibilities was when we tried that mirror routine. Mirror routine? Oh, yes. That was fun, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. We were pretty good, too. <laughs> Even had me fooled for a while. Okay, now, when I say go, way to be, then go. And go. Snaffled. Don't you speak any slang? I'm afraid not. You know what they say. Next scary fastest omnia. Who says that? It means it isn't necessary to know all things. You speak Latin. The only Latin I know is Paul Anka. <laughs> what else do you do? Do you like to dance? I like music. Father and I went to the opera quite often. As a matter of fact, the night before I left Edinburgh, we went to see Johnny Skeeky. Johnny who? Johnny Skeeky. You know. Oh, mio bobby no caro, mi piace bello. Hold it. You lost me way back on uh, Bambino. I'll be there today. Give me a week and I'll have you rocking the mashed potato. How is that translated? You don't know what it means to rock the mashed potato? <sighs> God, it's like running to somebody from another planet. I feel as though I am from another planet. Everything is so different here, Patty. And so big and fast. It's a bit frightening. Do you have any idea what a weapon we have in our hands? What do you mean? Separately, we're two girls who have a few talents. Just like anyone else. Your brain, I like sports. You like opera, I like to dance. But together, we're really on the beam. On the beam? With it. We can be in two different places at the same time. Do you think we could really fool people, Patty? Let's find out. How? Any objections? Not in the least. I think I will descend below and inquire how Aunt Natalie and dear Uncle Martin are getting along. <laughs> Interrupting Aunt Natalie. Am I interrupting Aunt Natalie? Of course not, Kathy. We were just saying how wonderful your being here is going to be for Patty. As a matter of fact, she could use a steadying influence. Patty isn't as mature as you, dear. <laughs> She's a bit flighty. She's a three-wheeled monster. <laughs> My being here is going to be an, an imposition on everyone. An imposition? We've always wanted another daughter. You have? Yes. And now that we have you, our family's complete. Just don't let Patty rope you into any of her kooky schemes. <laughs> is your room comfortable? Yes, very. Because if it isn't, why, we'll get Patty to change with you. Oh, no. I wouldn't think of it. Well, remember, this is your home now. Sometimes Patty can be a little selfish. A little selfish? So if there's anything of hers that you want, you just let us know. Actually, 
Actually, I, I just came down to tell you how, how wonderful everything is. Excuse me. I have a feeling they're going to get along just fine. What happened? Did it work? It worked. Now, if you're going to keep your mature self out of my selfish way, I'd like to be alone. to hurt you. Slang, darling, I wish you'd try to talk a little bit more like Kathy. How are you two getting along? Swell. Uh, she was just down here. Oh, yeah, we, we had a nice talk. I think it made an impression. What'd you talk about? You, mostly. We want to do everything to make her feel at home here, Patty. We told her she's as much our daughter as you, that she can have anything she wants in this house. Including your room. No, you didn't. Yes, we did. We want you to be very unselfish. Your clothes should fit her nicely. Yeah. <laughs> Ross, can I talk to you a second? Sure. Ross, can you stand a shock? Sure, Kathy. <laughs> you knew. Certainly. Boy, you should have heard me needle Patty. Bella doesn't get a chance like that too often. Well, she hates me. I have to prove to her that I'm on her side. I'd like to help you, but that's one place I've never been. <laughs> don't know what to do. Yes, I do. Will you get Richard for me? Sure. Oh, Ross, I think I'm... on the beam. <laughs> Hi, Richard. I can only stay a second. B before you split, there's something I want to say to you. Sue Ellen's very jealous. What is it? This. I'll get my pin back from Sue Ellen. <laughs> Why did you clobber me? I'll show you. Yell, Patty. What? Yell, Patty. Patty? <laughs> Louder. Patty! Richard! <laughs> Oh, you called me? Well, she called me. Who called me? I did. He's going to get his pin back from Sue Ellen. Oh, Kathy. You're Kathy? Catherine Margaret Rowan Lane of Glasgow. Boy, are we gonna have fun. <laughs> who's we? Uh, how am I gonna know who's who? You'll know. <laughs> realize this is the first leisurely breakfast I've had in 15 years? If I were still a slave to that paper, I'd probably be giving myself ulcers over the morning edition. Boy, it's really great not to have to go down to the office. <laughs> well, it is. You know what I'm going to do? I think I'll... Well, maybe I'll... Have another leisurely breakfast. <laughs> Aren't you late for school? I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> What are you girls going to do today? We're going to dress in identical clothes, fix our hair alike, and go around the neighborhood and put everyone in shock. I think, uh, maybe I'll just 
wander out and have a look at the uh, morning paper. I have a feeling this is going to be the shortest retirement on record. <laughs> No, 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 it's flat. Flat. It's flat, flat, flat. flat. There's no flavor. There's something missing. Martin Lane. That traitor. He's the best managing editor in the country. Who said so? You did. <laughs> and what's he doing with his talent? Fishing his life away in Scotland. Cable our correspondent in Glasgow right away. Tell him I want Martin Lane tracked down right now. Yes, Mr. Castle. That's game. Set him up again. Oh, Dad, do we have to play another game? Yes. Mom. Martin, dear, why don't you call JR? No, sir, I'm having too much fun around here. Are we going to spend the rest of our lives playing checkers? <laughs> it was all a misunderstanding. J.R. thought you walked out on him and his feelings were hurt. Wouldn't do any harm just to call and say hello. Well, I suppose I might do that. Would you excuse me, son? Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'll bet you did put the neighborhood in shock, Patty. How do you know I'm Patty? Now, cut that out. We've had enough confusion around here. Don't worry, Dad. I can tell him apart. Can't I, Kathy? He has amazing perception. For a child. <laughs> Boy, when I grow six more inches, am I going to get you? J.R. Castle, please. Martin Lane. Just a minute, Mr. Lane. Yes. We've got Martin Lane. Hold him on the line. We've got Martin Lane in Scotland. Hello, Martin. Can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Uh, sorry to disturb you in the middle of the night this way. Uh, how are things over there? They couldn't be better. How's everything over there? They're, they're fine over here, too. Just fine. Uh, how long a vacation are you planning to take? Vacation? Now, just a minute. What about Albert Marcus? Well, well, we'll, do, we'll discuss that when you return from Scotland. How soon can you get back? He thinks I'm in Scotland. Well, I don't know, J.R. Beautiful country over here. The, uh, the, the, the heather is in season, and... Um, the, all right, Martin, you can write anything you want, only just come back. That's a deal. I'll be back in time to put out tomorrow's Bulldog Edition. Fine, Martin, fine. Have a good trip. Goodbye, J.R. <laughs> Terrible overseas connection. He had to yell all the time. <laughs> Did you hear that? He's going to quit messing with my editorials. Yeah, no more checkers. And it's all because of you, Kathy. You're the most exciting thing that's ever happened to this family. I only told you. So, everything turned out all right after all. Papa got his job back, I got Richard back, and you joined the family. For a while there, I didn't think I was going to make it. Do you know what I love about you, cousin? Yes, Tom Sawyer. While you've been talking, I've been cleaning the room. <laughs> You staying in this evening, Patty? Yeah, Mom. I'm going to curl up with a good book. Mom, do you think Kathy's personality has changed since I took her over? What do you mean, since you took her over? Well, since she's been living here. Well, I think you've both probably changed a little. Remember how shy she used to be? She could never get a date. But I taught her. She's a lovely girl. Yeah. Do you know what she did for me all morning? Helped me with my homework. Do you know what she did for me all afternoon? Cleaned up our room. And do you know what she's doing for me all evening? Seeing a movie with my boyfriend, Richard. <laughs> Good night. Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere. 
from Sands and Far to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair of their cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are... Going to do all that, Dad? Is it going to do all what? It's going to circle this room twice, fly into the dining room, fly back in here, and land. Are you sure, Uncle Martin? Oh, sure. Operates by remote control. It won't hit the lamps, will it, Martin? Will you relax? I'm the oldest pilot on the line. Okay. Here we go. It's not flying. They sure don't build them like they used to. Well, it's probably defective equipment. Probably. Kathy, where's Patty? She's getting ready for a date on Natalie. Say, who put this picture of Richard in the living room? Patty thought it would look nice here. She was wrong. Tell Patty she can just put it back in her room. Tell Patty she can just put what back in her room? This picture of Richard. What are you all dressed up about? Big date. You know, I did him an injustice. I didn't really appreciate him. Do you know something? He's handsome, warm, brilliant, and punctual. I'm really a very lucky girl. I'll go let him in. Richard is handsome, warm, and brilliant? To each his own. Well, I know, but that's ridiculous. I've never seen Patty so worked up about a date with Richard before. She usually takes him for granted. Yes, she acts as though this is a special occasion. I think it is. Mom, Papa, I'd like you to meet my date. Colonel Jeffrey Davis III. <laughs> Live most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair, but they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe. And Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins are two of a kind. Jeff is a cousin of Harriet's. You remember my girlfriend who moved to Indiana Harbor? Well, she wrote me that Jeff was coming to New York. And I tried to get him a date, but Kath was tied up and all the other girls were busy. So I guess he stuck with me. I was lucky. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. You're a newspaper editor, aren't you, Mr. Lane? Uh, yes. And a great one, if you don't mind my saying so, sir. I'm editor of my school newspaper, and we use the Chronicle as a model of journalism. Do you really? Yes, sir. Do you know anything about airplanes, Colonel? It's a Beechcraft Musketeer. It's a good model. It just won't fly. Dad couldn't get it airborne. Did you turn the propeller, sir? <laughs> well, what do you know? I just came over to help you out. Help me out of what? Well, you said you were stuck with this cousin of a friend of yours from out of town. Uh, yeah, well, y you know how these things are. It's a drag. I know, that's why I came over. I thought if I went along, it'd make it a little easier. Uh, yeah, that's very nice of you, Richard, but it's my drag, and I sure wouldn't want to impose on you. Well, listen, if a fella can't do a favor for his gal, who can he do one for? You're absolutely right. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Well, aren't you going to invite me in? 
Well, I would, Richard, but you know how, how nervous these small town boys get in front of strangers. Boy, you're really stuck, aren't you? Yeah, well, I can handle it. Why don't you just well, run listen, along I'll now? just go in and say hello and put him at ease. <laughs> uh, Rich, uh, look who's here, everybody. It's Richard Harrison. Uh-oh. Hello, Richard. Richard. Hi, folks. Uh, Richard, I'd like you to meet Colonel Jeffrey Davis. This is Richard Harrison, my... a friend of mine. It's a pleasure, Mr. Harrison. <laughs> Colonel, please call me Jeff. Won't you sit down, Richard? Thanks, I will. Harriet gave me a list of places for you to show me. Oh, sure. I... I wouldn't want to let good old Harriet down. How long are you going to be in New York? Well, I'm not sure. I'd like to stay here as long as possible. It's very hot in New York during the summer. <laughs> Do you go to the same school as Patty? That's right. I'm captain of the football team. Oh, I'm afraid I never made captain. I play end. Well, I guess that's better than nothing. Yes, I was lucky. It's the first time anyone from our academy was chosen to play all conference. <laughs> You all conference? Wow, can I have your autograph? Oh, I don't think sports are really that important. I'm much more excited about the Oxford scholarship I just received. You received an Oxford scholarship? Yes, sir. That's one of the reasons I'm in New York. That's great, Jeff. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> The Oxford Committee insisted upon seeing me in person. Why, weren't they sure about you? I suppose not. You see, I'm the first student they ever had with an A-plus average. That's remarkable. Yeah, that's uh, remarkable. Sir, what time would you like Patty home? I, uh... uh <clears throat> what time would we like Patty home? Well, why don't you give yourselves time for a soda after the theater? Yes, ma'am. I'll deliver her to her doorstep at 11.37. <laughs> Thank you so much for the hospitality, Mrs. Lynn. Not at all. You must come to dinner sometime. I'd be honored. What about Thursday? Well, thank you, ma'am. They have spaghetti on Thursday. <laughs> Would you like to come to dinner, Richard? No, thanks. I'll uh, be very busy that night. <laughs> Good night. Oh. Good night. Well. He's quite a boy. Take away the uniform and what have you got? Just an all-conference end who's won an Oxford scholarship. Good night, Ross. Me and my big mouth. Good night, everybody. Don't forget to brush your teeth. I brushed them yesterday. Ross. All right, all right. But I'm going to wear them out before I grow up. Richard, don't you think you should have gone with Patty and Jeff? Of course not. You don't know much about strategy, do you, Kathy? Strategy? Sure. I figure a little bit of Colonel Davis goes a long way. By 1137, Patty's going to be sick of the sight of him. <laughs> Jeffrey Davis III is absolute heaven. His family owns a thousand acre estate in West Virginia. We're all invited down for the month of August. They have horses there. One of them just won the Kentucky Derby. Jeff used to race in the steeplechase before he got interested in chess. He's the national junior champion. He's so brilliant, I can't understand what he's saying half the time. Are you going to see him again? Let's see, what's tomorrow? Can't you take him off my hands for a few days? Jeff? Richard. Oh. 
Did you see the way he shambled in here? <laughs> Hi, folks. I'm captain of the football team. What are we having for dinner? Oh, boy, apples. <laughs> they serve spaghetti on Thursday. <laughs> you going bowling? <laughs> Thanks, dear. What's that? You know you adore Richard. Of course I do. Jeff's a whole new way of life. I wonder if it would help Richard to go to a military academy. I have to make up my mind which one I'm going to the big dance with a week from Saturday. Have they both asked you? They will. Kath, would you mind uh, going with the one that I... Uh, the word you're fumbling for is... Ditch. <laughs> I already have a date for the dance with George. Oh, well. Then I guess one of them is out of luck. Poor devil. Hi, Patty. Hi, Rich. Oh, thank you. What time did you get home last night? 11.37. Oh? How'd it go? Uh, okay. Well, I guess these duty things can be a pain in the neck. Oh, yeah. Hey, I got a surprise for you. What's that? I've got two tickets to the Jerry Mulligan concert tonight. Gee, Richard, I'm sorry. I, I won't be able to go with you. Well, why not? Uh, I promised Jeff I'd go out with him tonight. Uh, you know, for Harriet's sake. Sure, well, where do you have to go with him? To the Jerry Mulligan concert. <laughs> I cried. Oh, good evening, Richard. Um, Patty's out. I know. That's not why I came. We've already had dinner. That isn't why I came here. <laughs> well, these, is there something I can do for you? Oh, no. I just thought it'd be nice if we got to know one another better. <laughs> oh, I see. <clears throat> well, sit down, Richard. Oh. Uh, thanks. Um, Patty has uh, been seeing quite a lot of Jeff lately, hasn't she? That's why I came. I don't mind if Patty goes out with another guy now and then, but the Colonel, I don't know how you compete with him. He's, he's superhuman. Well, no one is superhuman. Jeff is. He can do anything better than I can, and I'm good. <laughs> well, uh, Patty seems very impressed with him. I'll say. I have a stamp collection. Jeff has a bigger one. I have a souped-up car. Jeff has two. He dances the Watusi, and I'm still learning how to do the twist. He beat me at Indian wrestling, ping pong. If he was a girl, I'd marry him myself. Well, what can I do, Richard? Well, I, I thought maybe you could give me some advice or something. I mean, you're a man of the world. Uh, how do you compete with Superman? Well, every new boy seems uh, glamorous and uh, more exciting, Richard. Yeah, well, thanks a lot, Mr. Lane. Richard. You know, there was a Jeff in my life. There was? Yeah, when I was dating Mrs. Lane. He was a pilot, and he could do everything, too. Mrs. Lane was quite taken with him. What did you do? I mean, how'd you give him the deep six? <laughs> oh. Well, I just used a little strategy. See, uh, I knew Mrs. Lane liked me, but we were in a kind of a rut. We'd always do the same things. Uh, go to movies, bowling, football oh, games. Like Patty and me. Exactly. So I started planning things that would intrigue her. See, every young girl likes to do things that are different once in a while. Now, there's a, there's a little lake about an hour and a half outside the city called Half Moon Lake. Hi, mind if I join you? Be my guest. If you're not going to do anything tonight, I thought maybe I, you'd like to... Gee, Rich, I'm afraid I... I thought it'd be fun to go on a picnic to Half Moon Lake. A picnic on Half Moon Lake? 
That sounds great. I've never done anything like that before. You mean you'll come? Sure. I thought you were going to suggest a bowling or another movie. What do you mean? You think I don't have any imagination? Yes, sir. Things are going to be a lot different around here from now on. Sam, my good fellow, triple angel flips for my friends. Sport. Did Patty say what time she'd be home? No. She and Richard went bird watching in Central Park. Bird watching? Yes. I don't know what's come over Richard. He's just full of plants that Patty loves. Reminds me of the days when I was going steady with Patty's father. He used to do things like that. I guess Patty's a lot like me. Is she? Well, Mrs. Lane, what was it about Mr. Lane that appealed to you most? Oh, I don't know. His helplessness, I suppose. His helplessness? <laughs> yes, women really have a very strong maternal feeling. I think I really fell in love with him the day he had a hole in his sweater and I decided to knit him a new one. You know, Patty, this is the first sweater that anyone's ever knitted for me. Oh. <laughs> when you told me how cold it gets up at Oxford. Well, I couldn't very well let their star pupil freeze to death. Well, I guess I'd better call Richard and tell him I'll be late. Are you sure he won't mind? Of course not. Anyway, I'll be through with this in no time. Of course it's my feet that really get cold. <laughs> That's easy. I'll just knit you a pair of socks. What color do you like? Oh, blue, green, gray, tan. <laughs> Richard, you're up against a pretty smart boy. He's smarter than I am. But you have a secret weapon. I am? Me. You? <laughs> The other morning at breakfast, Patty was saying that one of the things she likes most in the world and hasn't done in years is riding a bicycle. Gee, that was fun, Rich. I haven't been bicycle riding in years. What ever made you think of it? Well, I just put myself in your place and asked myself what you'd enjoy. It's, it's funny. I was just talking about it at breakfast the other day. No kidding. Yeah. I guess you really know me. Yeah, I guess I do. Can we have a date tonight? I'd love to, Rich. But Jeff asked me, and I half promised oh. him I'd... Have you ever been to an old-fashioned quilling bee? <laughs> <laughs> when will you pick me up? 7.59. I'll be ready. Bye. Bye. Where am I going to find a quilting bee? <laughs> You know, Mrs. Lane, I was very interested in that conversation we had the other day. Which conversation? Well, the one about you and Mr. Lane and how you married him because he was so helpless. Oh, I didn't say that. Well, sure. Don't you remember? The maternal instinct? Oh, I'm afraid you misunderstood me. Oh, women do have a strong maternal instinct, but they also want a man who's strong and who will dominate them. <laughs> I'll let you know when I make up my mind. Look who's here. Hi, Jeff. I was just... On your feet. <laughs> we are going out. But I was... Let's go. <laughs> Bye, girls. Wow, did you hear that? Talk about cavemen. <laughs> but he's not like that. Something's going on. Too bad we don't have a daughter. She could be doing this. Oh, I told Patty she didn't have to help tonight. She's getting dressed to go out. Again? Who's the lucky boy? Richard, I suppose. No, Jeff. Jeff? Richard took her bicycle riding and she thought it was wonderful. Oh, but then Jeff swept her off her feet and I think it impressed her. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Richard has taken her picnicking and bird watching. And... Jeff needs her more. She knitted him a sweater and half a sock. Natalie, you haven't been advising Jeff how to handle Patty, have you? Why, no. He was just interested in the way I... In the way you handled me. Yes. Have you been advising Richard? Yeah. 
home, Martin. <laughs> you realize what's been happening? You've been telling Jeff how to handle Patty, and I've been telling Richard. We've been competing with one another. Oh, boy. What made you decide to help Richard? Oh, I don't know. I lost my head. No, actually, I like Richard, and besides, Jeff is just a little too perfect. I know. That's why he doesn't have a chance with Patty. We women like him, perfect men. Oh, I wonder how I got you. How do you like your daughter? We like her. In early tonight. You know Jeff, old delivered to the door at 9.38. Well, it's become very domineering lately. I like it. What about Richard? Oh, he's great. He's supposed to up new things to do. Have you ever heard of a corn husking contest in New York? <laughs> Well, bye. A corn husking contest? You know, darling, I think your contender's in trouble. No, Patty is not here. Goodbye. Patty is not here. Yes, I'll give her a message. She'll be back very soon. Goodbye. Jeff, every time I talk to him, I feel like saluting. Hi, folks. What's up? AT&T. There have been several thousand calls for you in the last few hours. I feel like an answering service. Who called? Jeff three times, Richard four times, some boy named Scotty three times, a girl named Ann, Otto eight times. I wonder what Ann wanted. Probably your own number. <laughs> Jeff and Richard want to speak to you very urgently. Poor dears. I guess it's about the big dance. I really shouldn't keep them in suspense any longer. Well, we shall await the outcome anxiously. Good night, girls. Good night, Mom. Papa. Patty? Hi, Kath. I just ran into Maggie. She was telling me about her date for the dance. Oh, so she finally hooked somebody, huh? That's great. Who's she going with? Colonel Jeffrey Davis the third. What? Oh, there's some mistake. It must be some other Colonel Jeffrey Davis the third. There's a mistake. But I'm afraid you made it, Patty. He was so sure from the way you talked that you were going with Richard that he asked Maggie. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a fickle man. <laughs> All right, I'll go with Richard. I'm afraid you won't. Who says so? Richard. He's taking Sue Ellen. <laughs> Sue Ellen is going with my Richard? Now, don't blame Richard. He was so sure from the way you spoke that you were going with Jeffrey. But he asked Sue Ellen. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, Patty. You know what just happened to me? In 60 seconds, I went from femme fate how to just plain old fatal. <laughs> Gee, you look great, Kath. Thank you. Are you sure you won't change your mind, Patty, and come to the dance? George's cousin would be happy to take you. No, thanks. I don't want charity. Besides, I have a date, and we're not going to any pokey old dance. Do you really have a date? Cross my heart. Is it someone new? I've never been out with them before. All right, then. Have fun. You too. Bye. I'm sorry you had to miss the dance, darling. Oh, well. Can't win them all. Patty, do you remember that Aesop fable about the fox and the chicken? Sure, Papa. This fox had a chicken in his mouth, and he was passing over a river, and he saw his reflection in it. And he thought it was a bigger chicken, so he dropped the one he had. And he lost them both. Morrow, be happy with the chicken you've got. I'm ready. Okay, let's go then. What's playing? Well, why do you care? 
How many times do you get treated to a movie by a femme fatale? Don't wait up for us. Here's Kathy who's lived most everywhere From Zanzibar to Barclay Square But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights What a crazy pair But they're cousins Identical cousins and you'll find They laugh alike They walk alike At times they even talk alike You can lose your mind When cousins Papa, you know how you always wanted me to be a culture vulture? I don't recall using that phrase. Well, you know how you hate rock and roll music, and you always wanted me to be interested in classical music? Yes. Well, I am. W wait a minute. You mean this morning you went to school liking rock and roll, and this evening you came home liking the classics? You must have left out the middle part. That's the surprise. I tried out for the school orchestra and I made it. They're going to give me an instrument and free lessons. I'll be playing all the classics. That's wonderful. I had no idea you were interested in music, Patty. She isn't. I've heard her say. You know, I can't tell you how delighted I am. You know, you're really a chip off the old block. You know, I worked my way through college playing the piano. Boy, that, that's wonderful. We can have our own little music cows around here. Kathy can play the violin, I'll play the piano, and uh, what's your instrument? I brought it home. I'll go get it. Patty didn't mention a thing to me about this. I guess she wanted to surprise me. Well, I'm more than surprised. I'm thrilled. There's going to be a whole new atmosphere around here. Here it is. Leave Kathy who's lit most everywhere. Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins. My identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends. Different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet. The ballet roots. And Crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still they're cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins are two of a kind. since early this morning. That's wonderful. My ears hurt. <laughs> I'm not a musician, Martin, but isn't she playing a lot of wrong notes? What makes you think that, Aunt Natalie? Well, now, she's playing a few, but that's what practicing is for. So you can learn wrong notes? Excuse me. Can I get you something, Mark? No, no. I'll be right back. interested in some other guy? Well, with some other guy, I can handle it. I lost her to a tuba. I don't understand. Patty suddenly got this thing for long-haired music. Since she joined the school orchestra, she's got that silly tuba wrapped around her all the time. Sorry, Richard. I'm afraid I'm on Patty's side. 
I'm delighted that she's taken up a musical instrument. You want your only daughter to be a tuba player? <laughs> well, I think it's going to be her life's work. <clears throat> well, look at it this way, Richard. You've lost her to Mozart. It's bigger than both of you. Martin. Gee, I thought maybe it'd be on my side, Mr. Lane. Sorry, Richard. Tell her I'll send for my rock and roll records. <laughs> Patty! What? Do you think you could stop that for a little while? I've been trying to write a letter. You mean music bothers you? No, music doesn't, but... Patty, you haven't stopped playing that thing all week. Well, how am I going to learn if I don't practice? Could you go somewhere else and practice? Where? How about Chicago? I thought you liked music. Listen to this. Beautiful, isn't it? Handle. Oh, I'd recognize it any place. Thank you. You know, Kath, Papa was sure right. I always thought long hair music was a drag. But boy, it really lifts you. You mean playing that lifts you? It's not so much what I'm doing now. It's what I'm going to do. I've decided to give concerts. On the tuba. Oh, that will be a novelty. I'll be the only woman tuba player in the world. We'll play everywhere. London, Paris, the Bronx. Posters will simply say, Patty Lane and her tuba. The theaters will be sold out as soon as we're announced. Of course, it will be a lonely life. But it's all worth it. One day, you're walking down the street in a strange city. And people recognize you. You hear them say, there goes Patty Lane in her tuba. And they say, Miss Lane, my mother took me to hear you play when I was a little girl. Changed the whole course of my life. Think of all the happiness I've brought to people. Oh, I can't. I, I get all choked up. Me too. It's like Eddie says. Who is Eddie? Oh, he's the one who got me interested in this. I see. He's got a form an all-girl band. He plays everything. Clarinet, sax, oboe. Uh, I believe that's pronounced oboe. Oboe, oboe. He plays it. What does Eddie look like? Like Leonard Bernstein, only with more talent. And it was Eddie who suggested you take up the tuba. Yeah. I guess there aren't too many girl tuba players around. Well, back to culture. What's that? She doesn't even stop to eat. I think they feed her through that horn. <laughs> You've got to stop her. Oh, Natalie, we both love music and we want the children to appreciate it, right? Right. And I don't care what anybody says, that's not music. Well, it's beginning. Couldn't she begin a little softer? Tuba's a tuba. Just comes out loud. All right. If you can stand it, I suppose I can stand it. Well, the important thing is not to discourage her. Don't you remember at the beginning how we were afraid that she might not stick with it? Yeah, those were the days. 
But she has stuck with it, and that's wonderful. If we discourage her at this point, it, she could easily lose interest in it. Promises, promises. <laughs> Just give it a chance. All right. Remind me to buy some earmuffs tomorrow. <laughs> just uh, enjoying the music. <laughs> um, I got your pair of your muffs there in the drawer. Oh? I don't need them. As you wish. Good night. stand coffee from the bottom of the pot. I'm sorry, Martin. I'll get you some coffee from the top of the pot. No, all right, all right. Never mind, never mind. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's just I, I have this terrible headache. I, I'm not myself. I'll see. Boy, I'll be glad when you get back. <laughs> Is there anything I can do, Uncle Martin? No, thanks, Kath. <laughs> Let's go out. I'll take you to the movies. Darling, we've been to the movies every night this week. There's a concert at the Lincoln Center. Why no. No music, please. <laughs> All right, then let's go to the movies. If there's anything in town left to see. I wish she would get that passage right. It doesn't go that way. I mean, if Beethoven had wanted it played that way, he would have written it that way, right? <laughs> Unless you wait here, I, I don't want to embarrass Patty. Of course. <sighs> Sit over here. Sure. It's about the tuba, isn't it? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, it is, honey. I knew it. You didn't think I could stick it out this long, did you? No, as a matter of fact, I didn't. <laughs> oh, you were right, Papa. These great composers make everybody else sound like nothing. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> Patty. The, the thing that you have to realize is that some people are naturally talented as musicians and others aren't. That's exactly what Eddie says. I'm a naturally talented musician. <laughs> oh, I love culture. I'm going to dedicate my whole life to it. A, a lot of people laugh at the idea of a girl playing the tuba. 
do you remember what you always told me? It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you do it as well as you know how. Did I say that? <laughs> you know, Papa, I think I've been letting you down a little bit. How? I haven't been practicing enough. <laughs> Don't you know? From now on, this tuba will never be out of my hand. I'm sure glad we had this little talk. Thanks for encouraging me. <laughs> I guess there are a lot of fathers who wouldn't take the trouble. Well, if you can't encourage your own daughter, who can you encourage? <laughs> You're wonderful, Papa. <laughs> to announce who he's picked for his all-girl band. Yeah, we should be hearing any day now. Why don't you try out for it, Kathy? I heard you play the piano and you're great. Thank you, Molly, but I'm afraid I haven't time. I'm involved in too many other projects. Well, we'll miss you. You sound as if you've been picked already. Well, let's face it, there aren't too many girl tuba players around. Kathy, Maggie, Molly? Patty, I didn't recognize you without that horn wrapped around your neck. Well, if it isn't the king of rock and roll. Patty, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Well, we haven't got much in common, but go ahead. Uh, you see, there's this uh, jazz concert at Carnegie Hall tonight, and I thought maybe... Uh, we... Jazz concert. Poor child. Well, you used to love him. And when I say used to, I'm, I'm talking about last week. I've developed a lot since then, Richard. I've acquired a taste for the finer things in life. Here's your triple sweetheart flip. Oh, thank you. Well, you've changed overnight. That's the way it happens sometimes, Richard. Like a butterfly emerging from its chrysalis. Exactly. What am I? A housefly? Whatever you are, Richard, I'll always enjoy having known you. Why, when she gets off from one of these things, you... You can't even communicate with her. I'll send you a couple of free tickets to my first concert. Bring you one. I will. And my grandchildren. Peasant! Mm. Hurry up, Natalie. She's going to start again any minute. Won't you take me with you? Please. Now, I'm really sorry, son, but you have school tomorrow. Are you going out? Yes. Are you going out? Yes. <laughs> I thought you said you were going out. We changed our minds. Yeah. Um, where are you going, Patty? Eddie's taking me to a concert. Eddie? Yeah, he's her Svengali. And he just so happens to be the greatest musical genius of our time. His father's a conductor. Are you allowed to talk to him while the train is in motion? <laughs> How long have you known Eddie? Two weeks. Oh, but it seems like I've known him all my life. He's taking me to hear Shostakovich tonight. Honey, I think that's pronounced Shostakovich. We'd like to meet Eddie. Oh, you're going to? He's coming by to pick me up in a few minutes. You know, we, uh, we haven't seen Richard around here lately. Oh, tin ear. He wouldn't even know who Shostakovich is. That's Shostakovich. Well, I'm really very disappointed in Richard. He just hasn't developed intellectual wise. <laughs> That's Eddie. Hasn't he got a musical ring? Mom, could you fix your hair a little bit? And Papa, straighten your tie, hmm? And you... Oh. You could wait in the garage if you'd rather. No. Well, you're all right. I just want you to make a good impression on Eddie. He's so sensitive. I'll go let him in. I think you could call me a fair and reasonable man. Oh, of course you are. Well, I haven't met this Eddie yet, but I hate him. I can't stand it. Eddie, I'd like you to meet my parents. This is Eddie Blake. Hello, Eddie. 
It's nice to meet you. As my father, Carl Blake, the famous orchestra conductor, always says, pure tone is no accident. Does he really? <laughs> Patty tells us you're quite a musician. Yes, I'm very good, actually. I not only play 21 instruments, I also compose. <laughs> I think we'd better be going. Uh, we're hearing uh, Shostakovich, you know. <clears throat> That's Shostakovich. And since you're a musician, it might not be a bad idea if you learned how to pronounce it. Oh, you mean Dmitri Shostakovich. That's exactly who I mean. He's hopelessly old-fashioned. No, Patty and I are going to hear Igor Shostakovich. Really, avant-garde composer. <laughs> Good night. Adio. What do we do now? We get rid of that name-dropping prodigy and bring back old Tin Ear. <laughs> Igor Shostakovich. <laughs> well, Richard, Mrs. Lane, and I certainly appreciate your coming over here. Yes. Richard, would you like an apple? Uh, oh, no, thanks. Uh, what did you want to see me about, Mr. Lane? <clears throat> well, we thought it would be nice if you and Patty started dating again. Oh, I don't think Rohanna Pollock would like it. Who is Rohanna Pollock? She's a girl who happens to play the tuba ten times as good as Patty. And she doesn't think I have a tin ear. And boy, is she crazy about me. She doesn't sound like your type. <laughs> Richard, you and Patty should be going swimming and bowling and to the movies. All those things you used to do. Patty's not interested in those things anymore. They're not cultured enough for her. All she talks about is Stasha Volchik. Uh, that's just... <laughs> Patty gets off on these wild kicks and, boy, until she gets back to Earth, it's murder. You're going to help her get back to Earth again. I am? Right. You can begin by taking her to a concert. Now then maybe afterwards you could go on to supper. And then a couple of nights later you could go to the theater. And pretty soon, you'll be back to movies and rock and roll and bowling. Oh, well, you see, uh... Now, Richard, I understand that this is going to cost a little money, and we would like to help you. Oh, I think, uh, I think maybe that should do the trick. Is that what you wanted to talk to me about? I've got my pride, and I can't be bribed. You can tell Patty it didn't work. I'm still going to take out Rohanna Pollock. Patty had her chance, and she lost it. Good night. <laughs> Didn't work. I know, I, I heard. Cass, do you have any ideas at all? You could just forbid Patty to go on with the tuba. No, I, I can't. You see, I encouraged her to take up an instrument, and, and I've always preached to her how important it is to practice. There is a way. What is it? No, I, I couldn't do it. Would it work? Yes, but it's too mean. Kathy, this is an emergency. Uncle Martin, do you think Patty has any talent as a musician? I mean, does she have an ear for music? Absolutely none. All right, then. I'll do it. Will it get that tuba out of this house? Yes. But if Patty finds out what I've done, it will probably get me out of the house, too. <laughs> She's here. Oh, oh, that ungrateful monster. I worked my lips to the bones. I'll never trust another musician. What happened, darling? I'll tell you what happened. Eddie told me he was going to hire me as his tuba player in his all-girl band. Well, today I found out he hired somebody else. Who? Oh, some girl named Rohana Pollock. I don't even know how she found out he was forming an all-girl band. Well, maybe it's all for the best, darling. I'll say. Tomorrow I take this thing back to school and I never want to see it again. Patty, you're not too heartbroken about giving up the tuba, are you? I guess not. I don't mind dedicating my life, but not to anything that looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go now. Where are you going, Patty? Bowling with Richard. With Richard? Oh, is that on again? Yeah. It seems he was going with this Rohana Pollock, and now she's so busy rehearsing he never gets to see her. <laughs> Bye. 
Boy, talk about killing two birds with one stone. It worked. It certainly did. I can't tell you how grateful we are, Kathy. You know, actually, Patty's idea about being in the school orchestra wasn't a bad one. As a matter of fact, I tried out for it myself today. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. 